summer schedule rolls on, but rebuilds and trade requests have everyone on notice. In less than two months, the Jazz have begun to dismantle and are reportedly fielding calls on star guard Donovan Mitchell. Spite him, he's averaged just shy of 24 points per game in his five years in Utah, and the eight-legged freak could be carrying that production elsewhere with the Knicks a potential landing spot. Keeping us up to speed with all the latest across the league, we say hello to the coach, Avery Johnson. Uh, coach, Utah looking to take it down to the studs, and it appears that Donovan Mitchell, those sweepstakes, could really supercharge that rebuild, despite a most recently linked to the Knicks last week. What does that package look like, and how vital is it that New York gets this deal done? Well, it's imperative that the Knicks get this deal done, because with Knicks fans in their minds right now, they think this deal is already done. <laughs> There's so many moving parts. In this deal, and they want to, they don't want to disappoint their fans. And, and in a way, they actually need to have some sort of leverage, you know, and that they'll walk away and maybe turn their attention to another player if Utah doesn't get their act, act together. Uh, because you know, Utah, in a lot of ways, obviously have all of the, they have all of the momentum here. Uh, so again, from the Knicks standpoint, um, they just have to figure out if they're going to add the maximum amount of first round picks that Danny Ainge is asking for. And I know he's, he's asking for the world, uh, but I know in Knicks fans minds and even some of the players like Jalen Brunson, uh, who I've heard this deal was happening even during the season. I think they believe that this deal is already done. So it's a ton of pressure on the Knicks. It's going to affect season tickets. It's going to affect sponsorships. And uh, I know a lot of folks are lining up already believing that Donovan Mitchell, that it's inevitable that he's going to be in the New York Knicks uniform. Yeah, it is big business when we start talking about the New York Knicks. And, uh, Coach, I know you know I'm planning a wedding right now, so the saying, it costs what it costs, really is ringing in my head uh, these days recently. And that's really what it costs when you're talking about Danny Ainge. He's not handed out any bargains. The Jazz exec knows this game from just about every angle. What can you tell us about Ainge's negotiation style and how that affects this current situation? Well, Danny Ainge has been here before. You remember when he basically uh, fleeced the Brooklyn Nets for all of those first-round draft picks mm -hmm. when he traded Pierce and Kevin Garnett to Brooklyn, which then ended up being guys like Jalen Brown and, 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 and Jason Tatum. Uh, so Danny Ainge knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how much time is left on the clock. Uh, you know, he's going to take it really, really cool. Those, those meetings and phone calls, late night calls have taken place with the New York Knicks. And some probably have been at 11 o'clock at night. And he, he'll say, well, I'll sleep on it. I'll call you back in the morning. <laughs> then he doesn't call back until two days later. So, again... He's not in any rush to make a bad deal. He wants to get the maximum amount, specifically not just players back, but draft capital. And the Knicks are sitting on a ton of draft capital, first-round picks. I mean, they can uh, trade up to, what, seven first-round picks in this trade. So I know Danny Ainge is really playing his cards the right way. I think Danny Age is also working for my florist, but that's another conversation for another day. Uh, let's pivot to the KD market, Coach. Reports emerging that the Nets will not entertain a deal from Toronto specifically unless it includes Scotty Barnes. What's your philosophy when it comes to a player of Durant's caliber? I, I understand the value of a young star like Barnes, but isn't everyone on the table when you're talking KD? Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. If they needed to trade Scotty Barnes in a trade with some draft picks, for Kevin Durant. They'll make that trade the heartbeat. Remember, this is the same organization that traded DeMar DeRozan mm. for, for Kawhi Leonard, remember? And DeRozan was a much more experienced, uh, established player. So again, Scotty Barnes, obviously rookie of the year. He's got a bright future. But man, you're talking Kevin Durant. Like Kevin Durant said in many interviews, you guys know who I am. <laughs> I'm Kevin. Oh, again, if Scotty Barnes has to be included in this trade for Kevin Durant, no matter what Toronto says, they'll make that trade like yesterday. Uh, it seems as if this KD storyline had a whole lot more momentum a couple weeks ago. Is there any chance in your eyes that he's wearing a Nets uniform on opening night, or are we too far past that at this point? I believe personally that we're too far past that. I, I, I just see, believe 100% that Kevin Durant opening night is going to be wearing a different uniform. Now, whether that happens tomorrow uh, that he gets traded or in, in August, who knows? 
but uh, he's basically alerted the Nets that he wants to play with a different team. I, I would say recently when there's been a guy like James Harden, whether it's a situation like that, guys get their wishes in mm -hmm. this situation. So I believe Kevin Durant's gonna get his wish. Uh, it's fiction uh, that Kevin Durant, he will not be on the Nets roster opening night. Well, let's pivot to the beard because despite being unsigned still and reportedly taking a pay cut, James Harden trying to say all the right things right now. The beard is expected to stay in Philly saying, quote, sign whoever we need and give me what's left, end quote. Uh, also, plans to come into camp in better shape this season. Are you buying it or are we beyond any such character change at this point in Harden's career? Yeah, it, it, it was fiction when we when we talked about Toronto uh, early on and obviously fiction with Kevin Durant returning to the Nets. It's a fact that uh, James Harden is going to return to elite form. Now, we got to kind of talk about what is elite mm -hmm. now. I'm going to have, you know, as many 40 point games, but I think he's going to be healthy. He's going to be in better shape. So, you know, maybe it's not, you know, 35 points a game and, and, you know, 12, 10 rebounds and 12 assists, but it still can be a lead at 26 points a game, 10 assists a game, and eight rebounds. That's a leap uh, in every stretch of the imagination. So I just think it's going to be healthier. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is going to take more pressure off of him because of his experience now. De'Anthony Milton coming over from Memphis, P.J. Tucker. Uh, they brought your sign P.J. Tucker, Daniel House guys that he's familiar with guys that he likes to spend time with off the court. You can, you've can you heard in the interviews here in Joel and B have been talking about how they're going to be you know, a better one-two punch. So I think it's a fact that he's going to return to elite form. We just have to maybe categorize what elite type of elite season that he's going to have. Yeah, unfinished business in Philly and Harden, a big piece of getting that job done. Coach, we appreciate you for stopping by with all the latest across the NBA. All right, taking a look now at the odds to win next year's title. Some shifting since the confetti fell on the Warriors-Celtics series. Warriors were the favorites immediately after the finals, but the Celtics have shifted as odds-on favorites at plus 575. The Dubs offering you 6-1 to one value there. But talking about some of these teams at the crux of the conversation, a 76ers 14-1, to one. the Nets already stretched to 16-1 to one with the belief that there will be no KD, there will be no Kyrie. Alabama and Georgia are 1A and 1B in the SEC, but that third spot could be up for grabs. Ole Miss might be that team. Lane Kiffin's Rebels coming off a 10-win season that ended in the Sugar Bowl, and in the conference they were 6-2. and two. They and Alabama, the only teams in the SEC West to finish with a winning record, are Dennis Dodd with the Lane train. Lane Kiffin will talk a little football later, but you signed a mustard bottle today. I think we know the significance of that, but were you expecting that? <laughs> I was not, and that was the first thing to happen to me today. So um, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, four years since the transfer portal started, one-time transfer is less than a year old. You're the self-described king of the transfer portal. What have you learned about it over time that's allowed you to capitalize on it? I'm not really self-described. I tweeted something that someone sent to me and gave me the idea of the Portal King, so I don't know that I would say self-described. Um, you know, and I didn't even think when you said four years ago, because it was like, that really wasn't it, because you still had the penalty. So it didn't, that didn't change the landscape of college football. NIL, to me, came basically the same time as the Portal, of, the one-time Portal part of changing the landscape of college football. And, or professional sports that don't have the calendar figured out or a cap. Do you expect a change in that calendar where it becomes more, you know, there's more windows, there's more structure to it? Well, they've started that way and got it better, but I'm, I think it's still going to have more, going to be a more productive system for everybody involved. What was the best part of last year for you? <sighs> I really enjoy, and this happened at FAU, I really enjoy if a program's not had success for a little bit so that your players, even if they're seniors, really haven't won. And so to have that happen, um, you know, and best 
regular season and school history and you know undefeated home winning season and all that it's just really cool for the players and fans is there any significant charlie weiss jr you know, is obviously you have a relationship with him, the new oc is there any significance to him this being his first power five job he's called plays before i don't know i don't worry about that as much um maybe i'm wrong